What's up everyone? Karu here from My Tennis HQ. Hope you guys are doing great. And today we have another racket comparison for you guys. Um, I've tested the EZO 98, the VCore 98, and the VCore Pro 97 HD. Three of probably the most popular Yonex rackets right now. And I've had them for a while. I've played uh, individually with each uh, for quite some time. Um, but this time I actually took them all on the court at the same time and play baseline games and, and service games and return games with each racket um, back to back to back so I could really get a feel for their pros and cons and see like what, what I was getting uh, from each, each frame in you know any sort of point situation because I think playing points is the most important uh, thing when you're actually trying a racket. It's easy to just hit down the middle um, and oh this racket feels good but once you start playing points you really see um, what works uh, for you with, with a certain racket and what doesn't. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm going to show you clips of myself playing points with each one of them and just kind of talk about what I felt um, and what are some of the things I really liked about them and some of the things I don't. Uh, I'm not gonna rank them from better to worse because at the end of the day, uh, rackets are, you know, it's a personal preference, uh, but I will give you kind of my feedback on um, why I, dislike some of some of them and some things about the, each racket and why I like them and what kind of player should be looking into uh, buying uh, either one of these rackets right because uh, we all have different playing styles so you should be looking for a racket that really helps your playing style so this is so that's what we're gonna do in this video um, again if you if you haven't subscribed yet uh, please, please subscribe to the channel it really helps us and uh, we're seeing a lot of growth right now. We really appreciate uh, everyone who subscribed recently, uh, but let's get right to it. Okay, so let's start with the E-Zone. Uh, this is definitely the most suitable racket for my game. Um, I like the, feed, the feedback I get on the strings on both clean hits and the bad, bad hits. You know, sometimes like some, some rackets feel a little bit muted on, on bad hits and you're not really sure uh, where you're making contact with the ball. I like rackets that give me that, that sort of feedback. And I definitely get this from the E-Zone. I think it provides a great balance of between power and control. Um, it, it has a lot of spin when you need it. Um, that 16-19 pattern uh, definitely helps um, generating a lot of spin. But at the same time, when you know when I need to really crank crank the ball and go for it, um, I really felt like I could. Um, I had easy access to power. Um, but at the same time, in difficult shots that sometimes you need a little bit more control, um, I also felt like I, I had that. So overall, from, from the baseline, um, for my game, uh, it definitely felt like the better racket. I could move the ball around the court well uh, and all that. So I, I do really enjoy how this racket feels from the baseline. And in any shots that you need a little bit more creativity, you know, a slice, a, a drop shot, or it really, you know, making the ball go up and down, um, I definitely felt like I, I, I got that from the E-Zone. I had good feel, I had good man maneuverability. Um, so I, I, you know, don't re really have many complaints uh, from it around the court. I just think it is a little bit too light at 305 gram grams, but you know, if I added just a little bit more weight, maybe a leather, leather grip, all that, I think it would be a fantastic racket for my game. Uh, on serves, uh, it feels very, very good. Uh, I really enjoyed, enjoy how much uh, spin and slice I can get. Uh, it's not necessarily the best one out of the bunch for flat serves, uh, just because I don't think it's as powerful as the other two, but um, just as a full package, I think for serving, it feels fantastic. Um, on the returns, um, there was a good amount of control and feedback, which I really like. Um, and it was fairly stable through the shot. Again, it's because it's a little bit light, it's not necessarily the easiest um, to return with because, you know, this doesn't, doesn't have too much weight behind it. So you kind of have to really swing. But it's not really a complaint. It's just you need a little bit more weight. But the feel of it was fantastic. So overall, for my game, this is definitely the best racket. Um, it's, a, again, a little bit too light. Uh, I would have to add some weight to it, but overall, uh, just 
the best one out of the bunch. I like the feel of it. I like how I was able to, to move the ball around the court the way I like. Um, I didn't really need to adjust too much to play with it. I just kind of picked it up and swung as Carousel, and I really liked it. So um, definitely my favorite out of the three. It has its faults, but for my game, I think it's the best one. Okay, now moving to the Vcore Pro 97 HD. Uh, if you watched my review on it, um, you know that my biggest complaint was that I, it felt just a little bit too head heavy. Uh, I just never felt like I was swinging the, the racket around the way I wanted it. Uh, so for me, it's just, it's just difficult to swing. Um, again, it's just kind of my game style. I think someone that has a little more, bit more racket head speed will uh, like it a bit better, but just the way I play it just doesn't feel right. Uh, if you watch the points here, you see that a lot of my balls are just going down the middle. And it's not because I was aiming there, it was because I was consistently making late contacts with the ball and it, that's just unusual for me. I, I'm, I'm a clean hitter, I, I like hitting. Uh, contact is something that I think about a lot and I was just, I just struggle a bit with the, with the V-Core Pro 97HD just because um, Again, that the little bit of extra weight in the head just it, it makes it difficult for me to to swing the, the racket the way I want it. Um, that being said, I really love uh, the feel of the racket when I do make good contacts. I mean, the the extra weight gives me so much more plow through. I can tell my ball is just so heavy going to the other side. It has much more weight behind it than um, with the other two rackets. So, so from the baseline, I just have mixed feelings about it because I really, really like it when I make good contact with it and it just comes off the racket so nice, but I just don't make good contact often enough. I just miss hit too much. I always feel like I'm a bit late. Uh, again, if I, play, I feel, if I played with it for a long, long time, if it became my main racket, I think I would adjust to that weight, but it... I don't know if I would be able to make the switch because I just often find myself hitting the ball uh, a little bit late and it's just not, um, not what I'm used to it from a racket. An upside to this racket, a, a big upside to this racket is how good it is for serving. It's by far the best one of the bunch. It's, it's precise, it's powerful, um, it's easy to serve with. It just, for some reason, I just feel like I can crank the ball without making too much effort uh, so I love it for serving overall I really want to love this racket because it's so good in many many ways uh, it just does not suit my game um, that well but I do think a lot of people would like it so if you're you know, if you're a strong person um, and you, you want a racket that you know it's kind of like a good mix between a player's racket and you know a modern racket that still helps you with helps you and it's not too hard on 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 your arm uh, this is a fantastic option and finally the v core 98 um, i can tell that this is a great racket for a lot of people but for me carousel is just not right it just does not fit my game i'm a driver of the ball and i need to feel like the racket is pocketing the ball on the strings for control and uh, but the v core just does the opposite for me it feels very trampoliney. The ball really um, just flies off the strings. I don't have a long contact, so I just struggle keeping the ball on the court. I missed long a lot. If you watch this point here, you see how many forehands I missed long, and I just can't get any control with it, and that messes up with my with my game, with my rhythm, and just with my head because I never know if the ball is going to go in or not. Um, so I end up like slowing down my swings to keep the ball in and that's the worst thing anyone can do you know s slower racket head speed means even less control so for me it's really hard to play with that's not to say that this is a bad racket though this is i can see it being a phenomenal racket for someone with a lot of racket head speed that generates a lot of top spin that, that has that shape um that parable shape up and down uh, more than that creates that parable shape um, more than I do. I, I do hit a little bit more through the court, 
So for that, and again, I, I tested this racket only focusing on hitting with a lot of top spin. And I really enjoyed for that. It's just I don't play like that, especially during, you know, match play. So um, to play the way I play with it, it's very complicated. This is a very popular racket. Um, and I think it's probably one of the best selling Yonex rackets um, in the last, whatever, five years since it's been out. Um, but for me, uh, it's just not the right choice. That's not to say, again, that this is a bad racket because rackets is just, it's all about feel. But I just would not be able to play with it. All right, so those are my thoughts on each racket. Um, obviously, it's going to sound like um, I think that the V-Core 98 is not a good racket, and that is not the case. It's just not the right racket for me. Um, I think the three rackets have great pros and cons. Um, they, starting with the E-Zone, um, great maneuverability, good feel, good feedback uh, from the racket. Um, great for you know any few shots. Um, just overall, very stable, good feedback. Uh, swings through the air fairly easily. And for a light racket, it actually does um, provide a decent amount of plow through. It's not necessarily uh, flimsy at contact. So just, again, for my game, <laughs> overall, it's just um, the better racket. A couple cons on the EZO 98 is that um, it's not necessarily that easy on the arm. Uh, I've read some things about people that have gotten maybe tennis elbow with it. Um, so you definitely need to pay attention to what kind of string you're using with it. So it's not necessarily the, the hardest on your arm. But besides that, I couldn't really fault the racket in any way. Obviously, I would need to play much longer to see if there would be any effects on my arm, but um, it's something to think about. Uh, the V-Core Pro 97 HD, again, is a racket that I really wanna like, but I it just doesn't suit my game as well. Um, I love the plow through of it as a, you know, from pros and cons, love the plow through. Um, I love how it feels when you really connect with the ball and when you hit it in front of you. Um, I like the shape of the ball with the way it comes off the racket for my game. Like it's nice and, and through the court, it's not necessarily too up and down. Uh, but at the same time, be, being an 1820 racket, it still gives me a good amount of spin. Um, so it is a good racket that way. But on the con side, for me, uh, just not as easy to swing through the air. Um, I, I always felt like I was making late contacts. And it, it, if you know me as a player, you know I like to move the ball around on the court. I don't necessarily uh, play your typical cross-cross down the line. I like having, the, <laughs> having a lot of moving, um, moving the ball a lot on the court. And with that racket being so head heavy, I just always felt like I just, couldn't necessarily go for the shots I wanted to go when I saw the openings. Um, great for serving, fantastic for serving. I've said this before on the review. Um, and just overall a great racket that is just not for me. Um, I recommend it to like anyone that you know it can swing, can handle the, the swing weight and can um, you know likes plow through. So I think it's a fantastic racket. Just not the kind of racket uh, that I would need uh, that I would play with, that's for sure. And finally, the EZO 98, which is the racket that uh, I probably complained the most about in this video. And again, it's not to say it is a bad racket, it's just not good for me. I just feel like the ball launches from the, the strings way too easily. Um, it gives me no control. Again, I'm a guy that chests the ball a little bit more. I don't accelerate through it uh, with my hands or like my biceps. Um, but I really do um think it's a great racket for players who who like uh generating top spin and for players that need a little more pop from their rackets i'm a guy that i'm strong enough to create my own pace uh, so i need control and i need a modern racket that that can give me that sort of like feeling that where i'm pocketing the ball and the strings a little bit longer not necessarily just like slingshotting out um so those are probably my, my it's just a playing style issue that I have with the 98, uh, with the V-Core 98. It's not because it is a bad racket. It's a really popular racket. A lot of people love it. Um, so I think if you're a beginner to intermediate player and you're looking for something that is going to help you add a little more pace on your serve, a little more uh, pop in your, on your 
ground strokes, I think that that is actually the better option uh, out of the three. So again, all these three rackets have uh, great pros and cons. Um, it's up to you to know what you need from a racket. Because um, again, like obviously I know what I need from a racket. That's why I'm giving you this, this feedback. Um, so if you know you need a little more plow through, uh, maybe go with the with the 97 HD uh, if you want a more like, kind of complete package. I think the the E Zone 98 is probably the best best out of the bunch in a sense of it gives you power, but it does give you control, good feedback, but not necessarily you know terrible on the arm. I don't think. Uh, and the V Core definitely the V Core 98 definitely the the racket for someone who wants uh, a little more more pop. Um, that needs maybe a little more top spin, and I think if you know who you are as a player, I think the, this is a good selection of rackets that Yonix has right now, um, and you can find a racket that suits your game uh, in their lineup. So this is it for this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'm having a ton of fun testing all these rackets, uh, even though I kind of go back, always go back to my old faithful um, speed, but. Uh, really having a good time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe. Uh, visit MyTennisHQ.com and subscribe uh, and follow us on social media at MyTennisHQ on Instagram and at MyTennisHQ underscore on Twitter. And let us know in the comments below if you play with these rackets. Let us know um, how you feel about either one of them, uh, if you've tested them recently and we'll be sure to, to check that out, and I'll see you guys on the next one.